All right, so this is the pickups for the month of July. Um, I'm going to start off with the biggest thing, and that is a uh, original Xbox. I uh, picked this up for 10 bucks off of Facebook. Um, great find. Uh, it does work, except for the uh, disc tray does get stuck, but that's uh, typical um, of these uh, of this console well, of this console here. Um, it did come with two controllers. However, when I was at Tappers this my last weekend, uh, we went ahead and ripped open or well ripped apart one of the one of the controllers to make the other controller work better. Uh, so now I only have one controller as the other one is in pieces uh, in the closet. So, <laughs> uh, so it did come with two controllers. One now works. Uh, came with two sets of AV cables. I went ahead and traded one of those in, and the power cord. Um, so uh, yeah, great find for ten bucks. Um, this next item here I thought was really interesting. Um, got it for six ninety nine. There you go, six ninety nine at Goodwill. It is the Mad Cat's Xbox three hundred and sixty um, arcade joystick. Uh, now the interesting thing about this joystick that I like is it's got not well, it's got the analog stick here, but it also has the joystick here. So technically, you can play any Xbox 360 game with this thing, which is pretty awesome. Uh, now, unfortunately, when I plugged it in, all the light did there was blink. It did nothing else. Didn't register anything, didn't eventually sync, did absolutely nothing. Um, so I'm going to be taking this to Tabbers next week, and we're going to go ahead and take a look and see what might be going on. It's likely a short in the, uh, in the cable here, but we'll go ahead and figure it out. And when I do get that working, I, will, I do plan on doing a, a review of that uh, of that joystick. Um, the last controller I got, the non, the last game thing I, I uh, non game thing I didn't get or I got rather, was a uh, fishing rod joystick. I said, "Wow, excuse me, fishing rod uh, controller for the Dreamcast." Um, got it to go with one of my games I got. Um, and now on to the games. So, I'm going to go with the uh, original Xbox games first, um, and then go into the Dreamcast games, um, afterwards. So, first up, we've got, and I have a feeling, I can't help but feel that I did this before, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, and that is, uh, <laughs> uh, that is Morrowind. Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind on the original Xbox. Um, came with the uh, manual. And it also came with the map, which is cool. Uh, so complete. Um, for those of you that have never played it, um, it is a first or third person uh, RPG on the original Xbox. Uh, the footage you're seeing here um, it's just a save game that I found on the Xbox to show you uh, how the gameplay is. Um, it's actually really good for an Xbox game. Uh, graphically, it's pretty impressive. Uh, what I've noticed, though, with the original Xbox versus the uh, versus playing on the Xbox One, <laughs> um, is that uh, the original Xbox load time is just horrendous, and I have a feeling it's because it's the original Xbox. But uh, moving on. Uh, the next three games I have here are actually all mech games. Uh, we'll start with the... Um, yeah, we'll start with this one. So, Phantom Crash. Uh, there's a lot of spots. Um, it's complete. Um, so, I, uh, I played this game for a bit. And I played this game after I played... Uh, the other, the other th two games I have that are also mech related. Um, as you can see, it's it's uh, it's an interesting game. The mechanic that I like is the fact that you can go invisible and hide from uh, your enemies. Um, what I don't like is uh, just how kind of chaotic it is. It doesn't feel as as polished, I think, as the other two games I'm going to show you here um, are. Um, but it was fun for a little while. Um, so, next game we got 
is a pretty pretty awesome game, and that is Mech Assault on the original Xbox here. It is complete. Uh, yeah, it is, <laughs> it's complete. Um, it is a mech game. You go around um, destroying buildings, destroying mechs. Um, it's really well done. I really enjoy uh, playing this game. Um, as you can see, the the footage here, it's all 3D and, and awesome looking. Really fun to play. So if you have an Xbox and you like Mech Warrior, definitely a game that you should be picking up. Uh, the next game, and the final Meg game that I picked up, and uh, I really couldn't pass it up, uh, and that is uh, Meg Assault 2 Lone Wolf. Uh, now, this is technically loose in the sense it doesn't have the actual artwork, but it did come with the manual and the disc, obviously the disc. Um, this game took it up a notch. Um, not only do you have uh, power armor, uh, which you see here in the, in the, in the, in the footage here, but... Um, you also can pilot mechs. You can get out of your mech or out of your power armor suit and run around <laughs> on, the, on the battlefield. Why you do that is, is beyond me, but you can. Um, I mean, there are instances where you do have to get out of your uh, out of your mech and things, but uh, it does also add uh, there's tanks in there. There's uh, there's some kind of aircraft you can fly as well. It's not in the gameplay footage here, but uh, but it is there. I have played I, when I originally had the game in Xbox. I played this game extensively. Uh, it's actually a lot of fun. It's really fun multiplayer as well. Um, the next game here is Hunter the Reckoning. Um, and this game, again, was complete. Um, it is a hack and slash vampire game. Um, from what I played, it's it's an interesting game. Um, for some reason, I, I thought it'd be a lot more fun than it was, but that's likely because I played it years ago. Um, but uh, I, I may come back to it. This next game, I really wish was backwards compatible, but at four dollars, as much as I absolutely love this series, I had to pick it up, and that is Legacy of Kane Defiance. Um, I was going to show you the game, but it's uh, it's in the Xbox, so uh, <laughs> I can't show it to you. But uh, it, it only came with the game and the and the case here. Um, I do like the fact that it's actually a Hollywood video case. That's kind of neat. Um, but uh, but uh, you play as, from the start of the game here. You play as uh, as Kane, um, and you you run around uh, killing people and. Uh, uh, feeding on them and um, trying to track down uh, the other character there, um, uh, Raziel. Um, the Legacy of Cain series is one of my favorite um, game series. Um, I just I, I love the the story. The voice acting is great. The gameplay is amazing. Um, so so really glad to have that in the uh, collection. Now, these next three games are all Dreamcast games. Um, we're going to start off with uh, this game here. Uh, that is uh, Draconis Cult of the Worm on Dreamcast. Um, from what I can tell, it is a third-person role-playing game. Um... And as you see from the, from the footage here, it's definitely a, a, a role-playing game. But, uh... It's a game I, I picked up because I thought, hey, it looked really cool, looked really cool, uh, like awesome to play on the Dreamcast, but... As you can see from the from the footage here, I mean, the, the graphics aren't all that great uh, for a Dreamcast game. Um, it felt very clunky, very slow. Um, it even struggled at times, you can see there. Um, so, glad I have it in my collection, but I don't, th if I knew what it was prior to, if I played it prior to buying it, I probably would have held off on getting this particular title. Um, the next game I have here is a game that I've been eyeing for a while, and that is, uh, Expendable. 
Um, this game plays very much uh, like uh, Contra. I want to say it's Contra Legacy. I think it is the one on on uh, the 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 3D one on, on the PS1. Plays very much like that. But I think actually this game this game's better. I know, right? <laughs> but uh, no, this game I think is is done really well. Um, it is one to two player, so you know you and a you know buddy can hop in at any point. Um, when I was playing it, it did feel a little dark. It did feel a little. Um, as you can see here, I'm kind of fiddling around, and it's it's hard to determine where you have to go because it doesn't tell you where to go. It just throws you into the end of the game and and just has you played. Um, but definitely a lot of fun. I'm glad I got that in my collection. And this last game, um, hence the uh, fishing or fishing pole controller, uh, Sega Bass Fishing. <laughs> On the Dreamcast. Uh, well, what can I say about it? It's fishing. Um, <laughs> not much more to say. I mean, it's it's a great game. Um, it is an arcade fishing game. You can play the arcade version of the game, uh, which is kind of neat. Um, the graphics are really well done. Um, using the fishing rod controller is... It does feel... I want to say it feels natural, and it should. It's a you know, you're playing with fishing rod controller. Uh, but I like the fact that the fishing rod controller has uh, built-in rumble. Uh, so it's kind of neat. Uh, you can actually feel the the fish fighting on the end of the pole. It's kind of neat. But uh, but yeah, I picked these up because I am going to be um, going for a full uh, Dreamcast North American uh, set of games. Um, the Dreamcast, in my opinion, is one of the most overlooked consoles of its uh, of its generation. Um, lots of great games. So, got lots of great, <laughs> lots of great games to, to get to add to the collection to get to uh, the point of a full set. But uh, but okay, yeah. So that was the uh, pickups for last month, month of July. Um, I do want to thank you for watching, and I want to thank you for subscribing, and uh, until next time, take care and happy gaming.